Now, just after 6.30 on WKYT this morning, the Arctic blast we've been tracking all week long has arrived in the Commonwealth. We'll have tips on staying safe and where you can go if you need to keep warm. We have snow showers out and about all along with some cold temperatures. Add a little wind to that. And look what it feels like outside. Now, that's not even close to being as low as we're going to get. We go sub-zero, and I'll show you that latest forecast coming up. Firefighters warning folks about the dangers of space heaters after an overnight fire. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning from WKYT. Hey, we're glad you're here with us. It's Wednesday, January 7th. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. Welcome in. You will not want to be outside any longer than necessary this morning. Right. An Arctic blast making for some dangerously uh, cold temperatures and wind chills way down there. This is a WKYT First Alert Severe Weather Day. Just making sure that everybody stays aware of this. Meteorologist Micah Harris live now. How low are we going to go? Look, we're going to go really low. And we're starting off in the teens and 20s this morning. Now add a little wind to that and that puts us in the single digits to teens. But let me tell you this, it gets colder as we make our way through the day. It does not get any warmer anytime soon. So just go ahead. It's going to be unbearable. Throw on a couple of coats and take off. There's first alert defender live radar. And not only we're dealing with the cold, but a batch of snow is rolling through, especially just south of 64 from, I would say, Lexington all the way down the Mountain Parkway. That's your best bet at it right now. But it's moving southbound and southeast, too, and it could cause some issues there on the roadways. Today's forecast, snow and cold this morning. By the afternoon, like I said, 19 this morning, 13 by this afternoon. And during the evening, it gets in the single digits. It gets cold quickly, and so do those wind chills. And I'll show you how low we go with those with the new weather data coming up in just a few minutes. All right, see you in a bit. Thank you. These extremely cold temperatures have folks taking extra steps to try and stay warm. If you use a space heater, firefighters say be careful, and we have some clear evidence as to why this morning. A Lexington couple says a space heater damaged their home overnight. WKYT's Whitney Wetzel is at our live desk with some important reminders from firefighters. Whitney, good morning. Good morning. Well, firefighters say that a space heater like this one is to blame for starting that fire. The two people who live there woke up to the smell of smoke, but they were able to get water and put out those flames themselves. This happened at a home on Elm Tree Lane. The fire broke out in the bathroom where that space heater was running. Other than that room, the two can still stay in the home. A woman was treated on scene for smoke inhalation, but other than that, everyone, including a cat, is okay. More people will likely be using space heaters with such cold temperatures this week, so firefighters are reminding people how to safely use them. They also recommend checking your smoke detectors monthly to make sure they work. In this case, firefighters say the couple did have working smoke detectors, but they gave them a new one just in case. Uh, with heating devices that we're not normally using the rest of the year, and uh, another lesson learned on this one, we're going to set him up with a smoke detector for his house. Uh, they didn't have a, sm a working smoke detector, thankfully in this case. They were able to wake up on the uh, on the smell of the smoke, but you can't depend on that. And now another good piece of advice, firefighters recommend not running space heaters when you're not at home or asleep. Using these might save money month to month, but firefighters say it's not worth the cost of your home or your life. At the live desk, Whitney Wetzel, back to you. Very important reminder. Thank you, Whitney. The wind chill, of course, we're calling for later today and through tomorrow will be cold enough to be very dangerous. And if you have to be outside, there are some things to keep in mind. Let's go to WKYT meteorologist Jim Caldwell. We've called him early to continue our team coverage live from our weather garden. Jim? And now the snow is flying here in Lexington, a little more so at least on our end of town uh, compared to what it was a little bit earlier. And then you join that with the cold and you've got the perfect wintry scenario uh, going out there. But the snow won't be the big issue as we look ahead to the next couple of days here. It's going to be the cold and how intense that it will be as folks are going to be out in this. And the best thing to do when you leave, especially if you're going to be in it for an extended period of time, is dress in layers to protect your skin as much as you possibly can. One of the key signs that you're going to start to notice if you are experiencing hypothermia-like symptoms, you're going to feel nauseous, you're going to have confusion, you're going to be exhausted. 
if any of those things start to happen, even slurred speech, if any of those things start to happen while you're out in this cold, you need to try to get somewhere as quickly as you possibly can to, to see what the situation is, in particular for you. And with temperatures like we're expecting here over the next couple of days, it is certainly a good possibility if you're out in this for an extended period of time that you could become a victim to that. We'll have, of course, more on this coming up tomorrow morning as well here for you on WKYT. I'm meteorologist Jim Caldwell. All right, thanks so much, Jim. Try to stay warm out there as the temperatures plummet across the bluegrass organizations in several counties are making sure everyone has a warm place to stay. Shelters and warming centers will be open today in Lexington. WKYT's Mark Barber is out live in the cold to explain where we Good can morning, go. Good morning, Rebecca and Bill. It is bitterly cold out here, and this morning many of these emergency shelters are filling up. Here at the Salvation Army on West Main Street, there are even people sleeping inside the lobby this morning. So that gives you an idea of how many people are trying to escape these dangerously cold temperatures. Now, in all, there are eight emergency shelters and warming centers open across Lexington. Now, because the city's emergency weather plan has been activated, many of these shelters are extending their hours, and Lextran is offering free bus rides to homeless shelters for people without transportation. Now, emergency shelters will be open through Friday. City leaders are also looking at the weather that's expected here this weekend to see if those hours need to be extended even further. Now, because of the extreme cold, shelters are filling up very quickly. The Hope Center over on West Loudon says that they are already housing 200 men, but they tell us that they are making room for 50 more. They say even if they fill up, though, they will make sure everyone who comes to them will find someplace else to stay. Now, if you need immediate cold weather help, the United Way of the Bluegrass says you can call their 211 call center. And if you're looking for a list of the emergency warming shelters that are open across the city, head over to our website, WKYT.com. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. As the cold temperatures move through the bluegrass, stay tuned for with WKYT for continuing coverage. You can find the latest forecast along with any closings, delays, and cold weather information on WKYT.com. New this morning, we have just learned of a deadly crash in southern Kentucky. It happened last night on Tackett Creek Road in Whitley County. State police say it involved just one car. We do not know the name of the person who died. State police uh, hope to share more information with us a little bit later this morning. We'll keep checking. And this just in this morning. Morning. Police investigating a shooting after a victim drove himself to the hospital. Reports of a shooting last night in Bourbon County, but dispatchers in Paris they are telling us they are not sure where it happened. They say the victim's mother called police and said that he was driving himself to UK hospital. Lexington police say they found the victim at the speedway across from the hospital. He was taken across the street to the hospital, non-life-threatening gunshot wound to the leg in that situation. New this morning. Two people are charged in a Kentucky bank robbery. West Point Bank in Hardin County was robbed last month, and police released a surveillance picture of the robbery in Glendale. State police have now charged Leonard Sisk and Justin Collinge with the robbery. Investigators have identified a man killed in a Powell County crash. State police say 27 year old John Martin died yesterday when his car ran off Hardwick's Creek Road in Clay City and hit a tree. Police say his passenger, Patricia Adams, was flown to UK hospital in serious condition. The Red Cross helping a Frankfurt family after a fire damaged their home. Firefighters say they were able to keep the fire on Bronner Street contained to the attic, but much of the home has water damage. The family made it out safely. There's no word on how the fire started. A northern Kentucky woman is crediting her dog with saving her life. Around 11.30 Monday night, Kathy Shad says her dog Buddy pawed at her and woke her up. She discovered the houseboat they were living in was full of smoke. These pictures from the Bellevue Dayton Fire Department show what happened next. That 60-foot houseboat swallowed up by those flames. Shad, who did not want to be shown on camera, says she has lost everything, but she says she has her dog to thank for escaping with her life. I love my dog. He's my buddy. He gets an extra treat tonight. <laughs> And deserves it. Chad had lived on that boat for seven years. She was using a space heater to try to stay warm. Firefighters think some bedding likely fell against it, and that's what caught fire. Well, people all over the world have heard the story of Sailor Gutzler, the seven year old girl who survived a plane crash, 
killed her parents, her sister, and cousin in western Kentucky. A lot of people have felt moved to help Sailor, and some fundraising sites have been popping up. But a family spokesperson is telling CBS News that Sailor Gutzler Fund.com is the only one that is sanctioned by the family. The Better Business Bureau says you should do your homework before deciding how to donate. All right, we've been scrambling to get some details in on this and uh, CBS News working this story. An international breaking news alert this morning. Police in Paris, France say 11 people are dead after a shooting at a French satirical newspaper office. Officials say one journalist is dead. Three others have been wounded in this. A witness to the attack, uh, officers, I should say, a witness to the attack says he saw multiple masked men armed with automatic weapons at the newspaper in central Paris. Obviously, a development still being made in this story as it continues to break there in Paris, France. Yeah, and uh, CBS this morning with the latest in just a few minutes. Well, new this morning, searchers say they have found the tail of the Air Asia plane that crashed into the Java Sea with 162 people on board. The first uh, sighting uh, confirmed major wreckage. It's important because that tail is where the data and voice recorders are. It also raises hope for finding more victims' bodies. Well, police are looking for a man who may have information about an explosion near the Colorado Springs chapter of the NAACP. No one was hurt, but it did cause some minor damage. The FBI says it's too early to know if it was aimed at the nation's oldest civil rights organization. A gasoline can was put next to an improvised explosive device, but investigators say it did not ignite. New Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell of Kentucky told his colleagues that a lot of hard work awaits. McConnell took the helm of the Senate yesterday after Republicans formally assumed the majority. Becoming Majority Leader has been the Kentucky Senator's longtime goal after 30 years in the Senate. He says the Senate's first bill will approve construction of the Keystone XL pipeline. If it reaches the president's desk, he said he'll veto. Kentucky Governor Steve Bashir will deliver his final State of the Commonwealth address to a joint session of the legislature tonight. Lawmakers gaveled in at noon yesterday to organize the session. They will be there until Friday, then return February 3rd to enact legislation. The fight against heroin looks like a big issue during this year's legislative session. Lawmakers will consider at least 10 bills that focus on heroin abuse and treatment. Governor Bashir and Attorney General Jack Conway have announced a pilot program that will make heroin overdose kits. It's available at some Kentucky hospitals, including UK. The kits include Narcan, which doctors say can help save lives after a heroin overdose. Democratic House Leader Greg Stumbo says he's putting forward a bill that would make it legal for people to smoke marijuana in Kentucky for medical purposes. That bill would require doctors to be trained before they could prescribe the drug to patients. Time this morning is 6:43. Quickly, let's check traffic, see what's going on. Pretty quiet out there this morning. It sounds good. No major issues. We do have some snow flurries flying around a little bit there. You can see from the view of Broadway and High. And we have a lot more news coming up on WKYT this morning. We're looking outside, not only the cold conditions, but you saw it on our live sky camera. Uh, we're looking at snow outside and even a batch of snow that could cause some issues there on the roadways. We'll go over the latest forecasts on this and also those cold temperatures overnight, which could get dangerous. I'll show you that forecast coming up.